I'm Brian Westbrook with GeekWire Studios here at AWS reInvent, chatting with our friends at Accenture and NatWest. We have Kyle Danko, Data and AI Lead at Accenture, and Zachary Anderson is the Chief Data and Analytics Officer at NatWest, which is one of the largest banks in one of my favorite countries, the UK. I want to start with what you're most excited about. There's a lot going on here at the show, but tell me what's going on at NatWest. Zachary, to you. I'm super excited about the developments in generative AI. Our early use cases that we've been able to put into production have given us great returns and great customer outcomes. And you know, at these events and many, many events every every month, it seems like the technology is advancing so fast that it's making us like giving us new tools to develop really interesting things. Um, even in the last year, we put together a use case which helps us manage our complaints process. We've been able to really revolutionize that process using generative AI from the triage part of it to the letter writing part of it to the investigation part of it. And the result has been better outcomes for the customers. So our NPS and the number of customers escalating those complaints has gone down. The resolution time has gone way down and our cost to serve our customers has gone down. And it's all because of the tools that have really come about in the last 12 months uh, that enable us to do that. And so when I look forward another 12 months, like what's at the edge of possible now will be easy then, and that is super exciting. What, do you, what does the future hold? What will we be talking about in the next 12 months? So maybe you want to jump in here? Yeah, I mean, it, you, even some of the announcements this week from AWS around sort of distillation and you know, being able to fine tune models more easily, um, I think that's going to be really interesting as organizations start to adopt more agentic architectures and bring agents in to augment some of the workflow and processes that they're doing. Um, increasingly, I think we're going to see fine tuning of models to you know, create specific models for specific needs um, that that particular process is going to have. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's really exciting what, what's come out this week. Yeah, I mean, the one today just in Swami's talk this morning was um, they announced Graph Rag, um, which is uh, interestingly, we've been on the path to production. I think that we have a Graph Rag solution in production now in our fraud world that, you know, and this seems like a reoccurring theme that I hear all the time, which is if I did it again, I'd do it yeah, differently right, right. because new tools are available. So we started that nine months ago that capability that Swami announced today would have revolutionized how we did that product. It probably would have taken us you know, less time to do it. Like it's a crazy cycle that we're in. Um, but what I think is amazing is, even in all these cases where we know now we would do it differently next, like the iteration, the learnings in the teams, to be able to take advantage of those has made us just accelerate faster and faster and faster. And you know, like, Five years ago, if I looked at how long it would take us in a regulated bank to get a machine learning model into production, it was 24 months. Sure, right. Now we're able to do a prototype in you know four weeks and get to production in you know maybe uh, four months, five months. That's a pretty massive acceleration in terms of our capabilities, and and that's not just Gen AI. That's kind of traditional ML models and um, other pieces, but that's an exciting, a really exciting outcome right now. It's yeah, just that the just speed. Quicker and quicker, yeah, that right, speed to right. value and that speed to be able to have impact through the technology is going to be great for yeah. the bank and its customers. We talk about trying to think about how to skate to where the puck is going right, to be. Right, right. Yeah, the old, yeah, the old yeah, Gretzky yeah, yeah. quote. <laughs> um, and, uh, but it's really important because if, you, if your projects take five months, but five months in the and generative then AI space. Right. Yeah, right. yeah, so right. we, we literally are thinking about like, what is at the edge of possibility now? Right. Those are the projects we want to start. Right. If, if we don't think they're quite possible, but you can squint and imagine it, it's probably time to do that project. And one of the things that is on the top of everyone's mind, I think the headline topic for this, this show is, is AI, but a huge thought on everyone's mind, even more and more as we're talking and we're going on months go by, is safety. How do I trust that your AI models, that your AI tools, you have my money. Yeah. I can't be more, you have my pounds, excuse yeah. me, you have my money. How can I trust that you are keeping my pounds safe yeah. using these AI models? And, I mean, it's a super important question for banks because we exist on trust, yeah, right? Right. I think one of the things that's been useful is because we're so regulated, because we're an industry based on trust, then we already have a lot of processes that fit. So, yeah. you know, Banks have used automated credit decisioning sure. using stochastic models for years. We all have processes that if you want to escalate, there's always a human that will overview even an automated, an algorithmic uh, credit decision. And so 
we are reusing those processes in the AI space, just kind of bring them in. Then there's some unique things about generative AI and hallucinations that we're having to build both technical solutions for, but then also take steps to see how we're learning. And so we've implemented uh, an AI ethics panel that reviews all of our use cases. Um, but I think the more interesting case for us is how deeply we're building comparisons between, say, um, like in the letter writing example that I talked about before, we have really sophisticated mechanisms to, you know, pull some of them out, write dual letters with a customer, with an agent, and the AI track all the changes between them, and so we're building real comparisons to be able to compare the human output with the with the agents or the AI's output, and I think that's really exciting to me. And what we're seeing is good, you know, good gains. At first, you think, oh, I can take the training material for writing a letter from a person and give it to an AI. Actually that's not right, quite the right, same. Right. You're like, actually, I need to train the AI to think about these things, and the people I need to train on this. The AI is pretty good, at, if you prompt it correctly, at writing empathetically. Um, and so we kind of are learning those little pieces as we iterate and move through these, but we do it in a really regimented, tracking way, right. and we're constantly monitoring the models to make sure we don't have drift and that the outputs are as we expected. And that's, that's really, I think, how you build responsible AI into the day-to-day -day governance of your models is what I think is really important. And that's what also keeps you going fast. Yeah. If the model has to go to a committee every time you change it, right. and they, they have they to review it, it, like that's impossible. And frankly, I don't think, you know. It's not productive, it's not it's fun. Not, it's, it's not, not productive, fun, yeah. and committees really aren't in enough detail to actually know exactly what's going on anyway. Yeah. That's what the data scientists are there for, so let's let's give them the tools to govern their outcomes, um, and that's a better outcome. At, for them. at the sake of asking a committee question, how do you feel from a safety standpoint, particularly, and maybe I'll ask this question to you, Kyle, how do you feel from a safety standpoint, specifically, the regulators in the UK are doing, keeping up with all the technology that is AI? Obviously, at NatWest, you don't have a choice. You have to put in your own controls and processes. Yeah. Yeah, are the regulators keeping up? I know in Europe it's a it's a very different landscape than it is here it, in the states. It is a bit complicated. We it, within Europe we have the EU AI Act, which yeah. I think you know came out about nine months ago. It set a really clear precedent for the expectations, and I think that West most organizations have really taken that on and are focused on updating the policies and procedures, and creating the governance models um, to adhere to to that to that act. The UK is taking an ever so slightly different path, and you know there's a lot of uh, change and. and I suppose complexity around what's going on in the U.S., um, but ultimately, I think the U the U.K. in general has been very on the forefront of of this whole um, evolving space, um, keeping my pounds safe. Yeah, I'll tell you how I think about it though is I go back to the customer. Right. The, the customer to me actually has the highest standard okay. of expectation, and the regulators usually follow them. Okay. Um, and of course, we're going to do everything we need to do to document and, and meet our regulatory responsibilities, but. Often, if I feel good that I can explain to you as a customer what I'm doing, why I did it, you have an escalation path, you know, it's clear what the action was that was taken, I can explain that. Like, that's actually the real standard. The regulators are just trying to enforce on bad firms that don't think about that, what the lowest common denominator is. That's not what I strive for. I strive for happy, happy customers, a profitable business, a good outcome for everybody, and, and that's actually a, a much higher bar than meeting a regulation. I love that, happy customers. We are about out of time. I want to get a very quick answer from each of you. What is next in this space? We'll start with you. I mean, I, I think agents, which everybody's talking about, yeah. are going to be super interesting, um, personal agents in, in particular. Um, not necessarily my a company agent, but you, what's in your pocket is going to be really interesting. I love it. Uh, I would have said agents, uh, but I'm going to be a little bit different. So, you know, I think a lot of focus needs to continue going on into the business and the business change that needs to take place uh, from all of the excitement that we see, you know, here this week. You know, ultimately, we create value by getting these tools in the hands of users to help customers and making sure that that transition is done in the right way with the business and the user in mind. Uh, I think it's going to require much more attention. That is kind of what it's all about. Thank you, Zachary Anderson with NatWest and Kyle Denko with Accenture. I'm Brian Westbrook, GeekWire Studios. Thanks for watching.